here with Bill the Stunning One Edler. Bill, thanks for coming in today. Yeah, my pleasure. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about heads up play. I know you're known as a very aggressive player. Do you take it up a notch when you're playing heads up? Many notches. Many uh, notches. Tell me about the adjustments you make. Well, uh, in poker, uh, hold them as you know. People don't normally have a hand. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but when there are two cards dealt out to nine or ten people, there's more likely to be something than when they're only dealt out to about six people when you're playing a six max table or whatever. And of course, when they're only dealt to two people, then it's often queen four versus jack five, or you know, ace deuce versus king three. And uh, no one has a hand the vast majority of the time. And a big part of poker is winning the hand, the pots when no one has something. And so the shorter you get, the more often it's true that nobody has a hand, and therefore more aggressively you need to play. So how do you loosen up your starting hand requirements? What types of hands would you be raising with heads up? I have no starting hand requirements heads up. I mean, that's literally true. You're going to play any two. How you play is going to be very, very dependent on your opponent. But what if your opponent's really aggressive and you're really aggressive? How do you go from there? <laughs> it can often just become a, uh, a macho fest, you know, who's more aggressive. Uh, it, you're not playing your own cards much in, in heads-up poker. But what about like a passive opponent? Did you just run all over them? Or? Well, that's the easiest. When you, I, I once played a heads-up match against a guy that was unbelievably passive. It was just, it was embarrassing. And in a situation like that, you really don't need to look at your own cards because yeah. you're going to steal 80, 90 percent of the pots. And when he plays back you fold. It's just that simple. And if you've got someone who's that much of an extreme, mm -hmm. you can flop top set, and I know it's correct. It's absolutely correct to, to fold because you just don't want to get play a big pot where you have yeah. even a 20-30% chance of losing because you cannot lose to this guy if you're winning 80-90% of the small pots. And when I played this guy, by the way, <laughs> it was into... Who was this guy? I'm not mentioning it, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to mention it anymore, but he had already <laughs> beaten a couple of good players All right. before he, had, he played me, and uh, I just... They were either cold decked beyond belief or probably just didn't adjust enough. It's kind of kind of amazing. It should be very easy to beat that kind of an opponent. Well, say you're playing heads up, you're playing aggressively, your opponent's playing aggressively, and you look down at a really big hand like aces or kings. Mm -hmm. Do you still make the raise that you've been making the whole time, or how do you get value out of big hands? There are different different uh, schools of thought to something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I believe that if you're being aggressive, if you're in that mode, there's absolutely no reason to slow down. In fact, it suspicious. It, in fact, yeah, it, it, it can look even more suspicious if you play it more slowly. So, so I think it's kind of automatic to play your big hands as aggressively if, if your players are, are not going to think that the fact that you move chips indicates a big hand. It's, I would rarely, rarely um, change my strategy for, because I had a big hand to, to make mm -hmm. myself more passive. Uh, in my history of playing pot heads up, I've never really felt like I had trouble getting pit, pit, paid off when I got yeah. aces or kings. Sadly, of course, you only get those hands about 1% of the time, so we're not, <laughs> we're not talking about most of heads up yeah. poker. Um, well, but, what about like hands like sevens or eights? It's just all aggression all the time. Twos, fours, sevens, jack ten suited. Queen four suited. I, I, I'm so not joking. Serious. Yeah, I, I, I mean, heads I, I, up, a face card is that valuable? No, no, just the moving your chips. Just the moving of the chips. No, I, I, of course I'm just speaking in general. No, no. Um, all of poker, one of the beauties of it is that it's a, such a per people game, and you need to play differently against person X as you would against person Y. That's true in a ring game, and it's infinitely truer in a heads up match. So. Uh, I'm just speaking in generalizations, mm -hmm. sometimes you play against a, a person that you really think is, is a maniac, and at that point you might try to let him hang himself, but I rarely find myself in that situation where I, I think that I'm going to be the more passive guy and just play more solid than my opponent. Mm -hmm. That's no fun to me, too. Uh, I, I'd like to think that I can do it when it's appropriate, but if it were appropriate a lot, I wouldn't play wouldn't poker play. for a living. It wouldn't be fun. That makes sense. So... What about chip stacks? How important are chip stacks in heads-up heads play? Let's say you have your opponent two to one. You mm -hmm. really don't want to double them up, obviously. Do you have to be more careful there? or? Well, I don't feel that way. I maybe even feel the reverse. You uh, want all the chips immediately. Well, 
chip stack size is really mostly only relevant in, in comparison to the blinds. Right. So if you have a big lead, but the blinds are really tiny, yet you probably don't play much differently than if you were behind. I understand. And, yeah. and the, the blinds are really small. But once they get kind of bigger, uh, I I don't like it when poker comes down to two card poker, pre flop poker. But mm. once the blinds become large enough, it does. And even if I'm the guy with a two to one chip advantage and I don't want to double the guy up, mm. I'm going to put the pressure on when, when the blinds are really big. When the blinds are really small, I probably play this about the same whether I had that small stack or the big stack. Well, going into heads up play, let's say three handed, four handed at a final table, are you trying to set up an image for heads up play or at that point are you just playing to win the tournament? Uh, yeah, I, w- I would never th- be able to think that far in advance. You, it, when you're four or five handed, <laughs> you want to get to heads up. You, it's unfortunately n- uh, never uh, a given that you will. And um, so, so I- I'm always trying to set up an image. People who don't know me probably. What image are you trying to set up? Well, I mean, look at me. What do I look like? I mean, I look like a middle aged conservative guy. And, Average American. And uh, I think the people who don't know me think I probably play that way. And so. <laughs> How do you play, Bill? I, I play kind of crazy. I mean, that's what everyone says, and they're probably right. So uh, that's to my advantage when people think that I'm, if I move a chip, that I have absolutely nothing in it, I'm some rock. And uh, so it depends on your playing. Is There's some people I know that, that uh, don't give me enough credit. They think I'm too crazy. And uh, as you talk about playing straightforwardly, I'll mm. play my bigger hands very straightforwardly against someone who, who who knows me, yeah. <laughs> but if I'm playing against uh, someone who doesn't, uh, th- then uh, I, I might play a little more backwards against them. So if an inexperienced tournament player came up to you before a final table, he had a big chip lead, he's like, how should I play aggressively shorthanded and heads up? What would be the best piece of advice you could give him? Uh, the question is how to play aggressively? Yeah, or? no, like, what, what should he do? How should, how should I play at this final table? I've got a big oh. chip lead. I've never been at a WPT final table before, mm-hmm. and I want to win. Yeah, well, the, the advice, <laughs> in, in poker, you, you always need to be the aggressor. You're just helping your, your chance of winning, even if it sometimes doesn't seem easy. I would tell someone with a big chip lead to probably be careful about uh, who he's playing against, to pick on the smaller stacks and the weaker players, and that way... Even if he makes a mistake and doubles someone up, it it doesn't crush him.